Welcome everyone to our information session on our courses on tertiary education management. And my name is Heather Davis, I'm the Program Director of our awards program here at the LH Martin Institute. So briefly I'm going to go through the courses that we're offering and some of the types of questions that we get asked about this time of the year. Really what I'm going to talk about today is a little bit about the LH Martin Institute. Uh, the courses that we're offering in 2018, uh, the features of all of our courses, the entry requirements, course fees, how to apply and time for Q&A. The LH Martin Institute was established in 2008 with a federal government support grant with the express reason to develop uh, capacities for governance, leadership and management in the tertiary education sector and their institutions. We're based here at the University of Melbourne at the Melbourne Centre for the Study of Higher Education and both the LH Martin Institute and the Centre for the Study of Higher Education are part of the Melbourne Graduate School of Education. So our degrees are awarded by the University of Melbourne the courses that we have on offer in 2018 are a Master of Tertiary Education Management and three graduate certificates. One of them is really a half master's, it's also named Tertiary Education Management. And then we have two specialist graduate certificate programs, one in quality assurance for tertiary education and the other one for governance in tertiary education. Our courses are all offered fully online and we have been doing this, but particularly with the Grad Cert in Quality Assurance for several years. Oh, yes, yes. yes. We started in 2010 with a QA. Before we started the Masters of pretty much online in 2012, it had been running for several years in a residential mode as well. So we've been running our programs for many years now. Our courses also feature access to the latest research and resources about the sector. And for those of you interested in the Masters, there is a capstone project at the end of the Masters where you get to choose a work-based project aligned with your career aspirations. And that is a, a fully supervised capstone program. All of our subjects are taught by national and international tertiary education management experts and leaders. I've just grabbed a couple of research reports just to give you a bit of a, an indication of the sort of commissioned research that we do in the area of tertiary education management. And I do say tertiary education, meaning in Australia, post-secondary education. So that is universities, private providers, vocational education and training, all of that sits underneath tertiary education. It's very hard to describe what happens inside the box of online delivery. So I've tried to give you a little bit of a, an indicator of what the spaces look like. So up in the left-hand corner, we have Chin Hard at Work hosting a webinar. All of our online delivery uh, runs in an integrated curriculum. By that we mean it runs through a learning management system. We use Blackboard here at the University of Melbourne. But on top of that, we have specially written curriculum that is integrated so it's just a matter of working through the curriculum online. You can see in the top right hand corner there's a subject that um, I teach actually that we've just finished called Sustainable Tertiary Education Leadership and Governance and in the left hand corner this area is a pull down menu and when you click on one of the main headings it opens up and expands to show what is happening in that particular part. And then as you can see here, this subject is set out in three parts. This is just something that I've grabbed out of our subject using a live poll. So this brings me to really how we like to think about our teaching and learning or our pedagogy. It is a postgraduate program. So we are very much of the understanding that our students know a lot when they come to us. They want to learn more or develop in particular ways, but certainly are not empty vessels to be filled up. So we do really encourage peer-to-peer -peer learning as a way of really helping to um, socialise the sorts of readings. And, and it's in the discussion boards or in the webinars where students talk to each other as, as well as us is where that really um, comes um, into further understanding. So we are very hands-on. 
So just looking at the online de delivery, I've shown you a little bit of um, the integrated curriculum. For each subject, there are six hours of scheduled webinars per subject. Some subjects, the academics choose to run three by two hour webinars. Others might have four webinars at one and a half hours. And then we have moderated peer-to-peer -peer interaction on the discussion boards. And as you can see, we, we really do work on a multiple pathway into the master plan. So on the left-hand side, you can see in blue that if you wanted to do the master's straight up, you could certainly um, enrol <clears throat> in the master's from the beginning to the end, starting with the, the subjects that are compulsory, that ground each of the options, then take four electives and then the final capstone. But you can also see that in the, this green option that you can basically do a graduate certificate first, which is in effect a half master's, and then go on <clears throat> and complete as the second half of the master's. And then in this third column, again like the graduate certificates, we have an alternative to our foundation subject that is a, a professional development program, but if taken for credit equals the, and we have a credit transfer arrangement for you to come into our grad cert program with the equivalent of our foundation subject. So we have um, lots of pathways into the ultimate goal for most people, which is the masters. And I would say from the outset, I'm going to go through all of the, the courses, but if you're interested in a specialist graduate certificate, particularly in quality assurance or governance, and want to do the masters, that, that would be worth thinking about because you'll end up with two degrees. And no matter if you do a grad cert or a masters, the subject is the same. Our level of teaching and depth of learning is the same in our graduate certificate as the masters. The only difference is the length of the program. So our students um, in any particular subject might be coming from the masters. They may be coming from the grad cert or indeed people might have enrolled into a particular elective as professional development as a single subject. So for all of our courses, we have uh, these compulsory subjects that we believe need to be covered in any course on management, particularly in the field of tertiary education management. The first one is around the policy environments we find ourselves in. And the second one is on leading and managing tertiary education institutions with a particular emphasis on change management and developing change capable institutions. Then for the masters only, um, and like all AQF masters, coursework masters, uh, we have a capstone project, which is a double weighted um, subject at the, as the very last subject for the masters. So the, the projects are generally tackling a real life policy or management issue, and they generally, like all good capstones do, uh, allow a time for reflection on what you've learned through the other subjects and electives. There are many options to present this particular subject at the proposal stage and then again just before the, the final write-up starts to peers and academic staff. And this particular subject is a 10,000 word report. So I'll look at the tertiary education courses um, in management together, the masters and the grad cert, because as I said, it's only the length of the program and the fact that the masters had a, has a capstone that differentiates these two. The elective choices are exactly the same. So I'll, I'll take these two in tandem. So for the Masters of Tertiary Education Management, there are the two foundation compulsory subjects that I've already gone through, then four electives, followed by the capstone to equal 100 credit points Master of Tertiary Education Management. For the Grad Search, there are the two compulsory subjects that I've mentioned and just two electives to take out the Grad Cert in Tertiary Education Management. These are the, the electives that are on offer for both the Masters and the Grad Cert. If you're interested in the Masters, you would choose four of these. Uh, and if you're looking at the Grad Cert, you would look at choosing two of those to complete the Grad Cert after the 
to compulsory subjects. We will be running completely into terms next year. The first term begins on the 5th of February, so a little bit earlier than traditional semester start. Um, and term four finishes on the 7th of December, which is a little bit later than a traditional semester finish as well. So next I'd like to talk about the Graduate Certificate in Tertiary Education Quality Assurance. And this is what we describe as uh, one of our specialist grade cert programs. Like the others, starts with the compulsory 25 credit points of um, subjects as, as I've outlined, but it has an additional compulsory subject that's offered in term three called external quality assurance. And after that, there is just one elective to choose to complete the grad cert in tertiary education quality assurance. So there's a little bit of information there about the additional compulsory subject. And on the right here are the three electives that you could choose. You just need to choose one out of those. So if you wanted to finish the grad cert in the, the same year as you started, you would need to choose one of the term four options. Or if risk management is something you particularly wanted to do, you would just need to wait until term one the following year to take that to complete the grad cert. If you're looking at starting with the grad cert and moving to the masters, then it, it is advisable to take a term four subject to complete the grad cert and then take risk management perhaps as one well as of the final two electives. And our final specialist grad cert is in governance, so the graduate certificate in tertiary education governance. So again, there is the two shared compulsory subjects plus a, an additional subject as a compulsory subject called Institutional Governance in Tertiary Education, and then one elective um, to choose to take out the Graduate Certificate in Tertiary Education Governance. And on our left here, we have information about that particular subject um, taken in this course as a compulsory subject. And there are two electives in the governance grade cert, one of them in term four. And again, risk management is also a, an elective. On the left hand column are all the compulsory subjects, um, including the two that are asterisked here as compulsory if you're taking a particular grade cert. And otherwise, the ones on the right hand side are the electives and when they're offered. Okay, so next I will move on to English language proficiency entry requirements. And this is only for, really for applicants whose prior degrees have not been in English. If you have a prior degree in English, you don't need to formally meet these entry requirements. Um, and the other entry requirements are around professional and academic entry requirements. So for the masters and a, a change in AQF just recently lists that the entry requirement is an, a four year degree or an appropriate three year undergraduate degree with at least five years of documented relevant professional experience in the sector or equivalent. And that's the one that most of our um, applicants meet. So five years experience and the usual three year undergraduate degree. So either of those, the four year degree or the three years plus five years experience, together with the cu your current employment in the sector. And we do also ask for an employer support statement. And to be honest, that's probably more for the applicant than for us, just to make sure that your um, employer understands that you're committing yourself to some pretty serious professional development. Some employers go as far as paying for the fees, others just will sign that off to say they understand that there will be requirements when you need to put study at the top of your list. So for the grad certs, it's similar, except uh, we just require two years of documented relevant professional experience for the grad cert rather than the five years in the masters. And really, as I mentioned before, where we really do expect a lot of peer-to-peer -peer interaction, some experience in the sector really is important for you and your cohort as you go through the program to really get the most out of the courses as we offer them. 
The fees are set for 2018, the full master's program of 100 credit points, and this is assuming it will go over two years, is set at $29,848. And the full graduate certificate program in 2018, so if you start and finish next year, it'll be $14,560. The same fees do apply to both domestic and international applicants. The fees include course notes, reading packs, and catering during the residential school, but they do exclude textbooks if applicable, and we have very few set textbooks. Um, it also excludes travel and accommodation related expenses if you do come to the Capstone Residential in your final year of the master's program. If you're an Australian citizen or permanent visa holder, you may be eligible for fee help but you do need to check the Government Study Assist website as that is something outside of our control. These are the fees that are set for the course, but you are invoiced upon enrolment at a particular time. So if you're enrolling across the year, you'll be invoiced for your subject for Term 1 in Term 1, your subject for Term 2 in Term 2, etc. So it's spread out across those enrolment periods. The applications for all of our courses are through an online process and it's really important to have the code of the choice of your course handy. I've just mentioned them there again. They're fairly self-explanatory. The actual application itself will probably take about 10 minutes or so. What is the trickier part is collecting all of your documentation that you need to upload. Ideally have that prepared before you actually apply. So sometimes things like transcripts and collecting those might mean a, um, an email or a formal request from your institution to get a copy of those. They can take a little bit of time. We do also require a personal statement about why you'd like to do the course that you've chosen and also the employer statement that I've already mentioned. We do have templates for both the personal statement and the employer statement. They are linked here and I'll also give you the, the link for the application process as well. So they're, they're on where it says apply here um, or application requirements, you'll find those templates. We do need an up-to-date CV to really cover off your years of experience. So applications close on the 15th of January for a term one start. The term one starts on the 5th of February. We always open up our subjects a week earlier so you can get uh, a start on the readings and just get to to grips with what it looks like online. And CHIN always offers in that O week, the week before, some technical support um, around how to use webinars and the LMS, that sort of thing. Dina, did we have any questions coming in from, the, um, from others? Yes, and we had a few questions from people who couldn't uh, actually join the webinar today. One question was around um, uh, not being able to commit to the full course right away, but I think you covered it uh, by talking about single subject and how they can be taken one at a time. There was another question about the uh, difference between MBA and uh, MTEM. No, I think it is a good question. It's one I'm generally asked um, about to, as a, a potential MTEM um, applicant or indeed any master's, uh, which one should I do? And I guess that really is a, a very personal decision. It depends a little bit about how committed to the sector you are or how general you want that master's to be. Uh, and that really is the, the thing that most people would decide on. I would say in our favour that we have our, all of our subjects that are contextualised and have been tested for the sector. Our sector is a bit different to others and for the reasons that will become clearer, particularly after those first couple of compulsory subjects. Uh, so if you're looking at, if you're in a professional position where you could range in and out of the sector or work in another sector, then perhaps the MBA might be um, a better one. But as I mentioned before, you can still take some electives even in the MBA to sort of get a bit of best of both worlds. But if you're fairly committed to the sector, have a role that is pretty much likely to remain in the sector, then I would really recommend you know, considering very seriously our um, Master of Tertiary Education Management. Yeah, thank you. Um, there was one question also about the scholarships. I mean, you, you talked a little, about it, a little bit about it. Um, is there, are there any international scholarships for international students? 
Yeah, so we don't have very many scholarships in our, in our course, other than generally, you know, scholarships from our institutions. Um, some, you know, they're by agreement, some institutions will pay some or all of, of the, um, the fees. But we do have a scholarship from INQUAHE, which is the overarching body of the likes of our TEXA. So the, the quality agencies around the world have a, an umbrella organisation called INQUAHE. They have a 5,000 US dollar scholarship for participants in developing countries. Uh, and that one will be, there will be several scholarships offered for the Grad Cert, grad cert Quality Assurance for people in developing nations starting from term two in 2018. Um, Chin, can you just explain a bit more about who um, qualifies as a, a developing nation? Okay, uh, the, the International Network for Quality Assurance Agencies in Higher Education, or the INGUAHE for short, has a list of uh, developing countries based on UNESCO classification. Um, you will have to apply to the INGUAHE directly and you have to satisfy their criteria. They got a selections process coming in, and once you got the awards, um, then you apply for the University of Melbourne uh, place. Thank you, Chin. And thank you, Gina. Were there any others? Oh, no, that's all from me. Thank you, Heather. We're going to finish up with this video. It gives you exposure to uh, a range of different uh, concepts and ideas, but all about what's happening with the sector. So if you want to be in the education, if you want that to be your career, I think it's an ideal program. For anybody who is thinking of t taking this course, I would strongly encourage them to do so. It um, provides you with an excellent networking opportunity. You meet wonderful people from all over the um, tertiary education sector and um, across many disciplines all over the world now that it's uh, online and uh, provides you with an excellent framework for higher education setting, policy and, and management. The knowledge is really cutting edge. They, 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 they have a wide body of, of long-standing knowledge about development of the sector, but they're still you know, out there researching and developing you know, the ideas that are shaping tomorrow. I, I, I found that to be really exhilarating. The academics uh, are very supportive uh, and they are world leaders in their field and I have learned so much from their uh, courses and also through their guidance and it's just been brilliant. I found the online experience was really valuable. Um, I, I found it was really easy and really engaging. Um, but better than that, I think it was really well supported, like the depth of material was, was terrific. You could really, you know, when, you, when an issue took your interest, you could really dive very deeply into the material and, and being able to engage with subject matter experts, not just from within the faculty, but, but guest speakers globally who are at the cutting edge of their field. The tertiary education management course was one of the best things I've ever done. It gave me some confidence, confidence to go for other jobs, confidence to do a PhD, uh, confidence to improve my career. So my career has improved because of it. So I've, I have now been 20 months at a different institution, a bigger institution, a role that once upon a time I didn't think I could do. Now I know I can.